Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block, a website where we talk about our indoor environment at home, how to create it as toxin free as possible, and how to create an indoor environment that really promotes health and wellness and supports a healthy immune system. This week on the blog and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about kitchen items, specifically those for our kids. Um, I'm gonna start us out from breastfeeding all the way to like preschool age dishes and water bottles. And we're gonna go through everything and I'm going to help you guys figure out um, what works for your family. We're gonna cut out plastics, we're gonna cut out um, things that have toxins in them and replace them with something non-toxic. There's lots of options, um, as you'll find out in this week's slides, that um, can really replace um, something toxic. You could do glass, you could do metal, you could do silicone um, for a lot of these, and so it's up to you to find out what works for your family. Um, if you guys follow me on social media, you um, know that I had a baby in October, and um, while I originally had planned to um, just treat this baby like my other two girls and breastfeed um, and do everything as natural as possible, we unfortunately didn't get to do that with him um, because he has some special needs with his intestines and has been on a feeding tube for the first um, few months of his life. And so while I'm pumping exclusively, um, I was not able to do it all with the silicone bags that I had planned, but I want to share with you what I was going to do um, and if it works for you, you know, if you're not pumping um, around the clock, you could probably swing this as well. So we're going to talk about um, breast milk storage and some really good options inside of those plastic bags. Um, and then we're going to talk about some bottles that you can use um, that don't have plastic, BPA, um, phthalates, any of that in it. And then we're going to um, move on up into like dishes. I've even got bibs for you guys. Um, anything that's related to feeding your toddler, baby, or preschooler, um, we're going to cover today. So if you guys um, are up for it, let's go through these slides. So as I talked about before, um, I'll be completely honest, when I planned out this blog post, I was, and this video, I was about eight months pregnant. Um, now I have my baby boy Cameron home. Um, I planned to share with you originally all the natural baby items and organic kitchen products that I would be using for him. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that Cameron's birth um, and his story were like far from normal. Um, I'm a completely open book about this and his medical needs, um, and what our day-to-day -day life looks like. Um, but it's not really in line with what I teach because, um, I had to make some adjustments. He has some special medical needs. Um, and it means that I have to be okay with using some things that have toxins in them, um, including like breast milk storage bags. Um, as like I said, I am pumping exclusively, um, doing some sort of silicone bag just didn't work with what we had to have stored up um, in our freezer. So without getting into like a crazy amount of detail, um, the amount of plastic being used in my home during these few months um, while Cameron is doing his intestinal rehab, um, the toxins are in my home and it does bother me, but, um, between his temporary feeding tube, which is flexible plastic. And, um, again, the plastic storage bags for, um, milk in our freezer and adding formula to his milk. Um, what I envisioned when I wrote this and planned this video are far from reality. Um, but the point of me sharing all this with you is to give you some peace of mind that, um, if you're reading this and you just can't swing every single toxin free thing for your baby, you know, due to financial reasons, um, convenience issues, you just plain don't have the means, it's okay. Um, so this is just, these are suggestions for you guys, not to scare you, not to make you feel that you haven't done a good job. Um, so let's get started. Um, so the first thing is we want to avoid plastics if we can. Um, I am adamantly opposed to eating off of plastic, using plastic in the kitchen. Um, plastic is one of those things that just expose you to a plethora of toxins. Um, plastic mealtime items contain PVC um, toxins and um, an article put out by Harvard outlines that the main chemicals 
um, you know, in plastic phthalates and bisphenol toxins are really harmful to our health. Both of these chemicals are harmful to the natural production of hormones. Um, our hormones regulate, regulate so much within our bodies, including, um, supporting our immune system and childhood development. So once those natural systems are burdened or hindered, um, we have all sorts of issues that start to pop up. Um, these problems can include cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, um, abnormalities with liver enzymes. It can also um, lead to a concern for pre- and postnatal development um, when exposure to BA BPA and plastics take place. Um, phthalates also play a role in developmental uh, development of um, the reproductive system, and they can trigger serious disorders. Um, another study that I'm linking to in the blog links it to um, some issues with brain development um, and how it affects behavior. So this list of plastic um, exposures is um, just a short list, to be honest. Um, Limiting the sources that you can is the best way to avoid like that low dose chronic exposure to plastic chemicals that we talk about. So what if you can't avoid toxic materials? Um, I know as I read studies and I'm finding articles that I'm sharing with you, one of the problems that jumped out to me as the main concern for infants being explo exposed um, to plastic is kids who have been in the NICU. Um, so my baby was in the NICU for the first 48 days of his life. And this kind of left me with like a guilty feeling. So rationally, I know that there's no sense in worrying about it. Um, because we needed him to be in the NICU to survive. But part of me will always wonder what the exposure to plastics, um, did to his body. So with that being said, when I cannot avoid something, you know, that's plastic in our home, I just remember that I don't need to worry. My job is only to limit as best I can. So, this lesson is one that I'm working on all the time, um, but changing what is in my direct control and then mentally kind of let, letting go of what I cannot change um, is going to be key. Um, so for you, this might mean ditching plastic ditches. It might mean switching over to glass bottles. It might mean just opting for silicone milk storage bags or buying baby food stored in glass jars instead. Um, but maybe you can only change one or two of those things and that is okay. So here are some things that we can do in addition when we can't necessarily go out and just buy a bunch of new things. Um, First is dusting more often. Dust holds so many toxic chemicals, um, especially for kids, because they have um, different hand-to-mouth habits than adults, and so their exposure is generally higher when it comes to dust. So dust more often, and then vacuum. Vacuum on a regular basis if you can. Um, it also helps remove dust, and it can protect those little bodies. So even if you switch over to a few of the baby products that I'm mentioning, um, you still have things you can do at home to really protect them. So here are some safe um, products that you can look for. So the first one is silicone. Um, I did this uh, a while ago. I did a really lengthy post on um, silicone, and I have that linked in this week's blog post, and it talks about what to look for when you're purchasing this material. It's a great alternative to plastic. It's soft. It's moldable. Um, it's a material that can't necessarily break, so it's pretty safe for kids. Um, and then just make sure you're opting for like food grade or platinum silicone, um, and you'll be good to go. So, and then um, the next one is glass. Glass can be kind of tricky um, because because with kids and babies it can break but it's a really good safe material um, a lot of times you can find it wrapped with like a cloth or silicone sleeve um, and I have some options linked for you guys another uh, material would be metal um, stainless steel is really what we want here we want to avoid aluminum um, it's great for utensils, plates, um, cups, all kinds of things, but aluminum can affect brain development, so we do want to avoid that. Um, next on the list is bamboo. This is great for like a disposable um, dish. A lot of them are being made from bamboo. It's an incredible renewable resource that's being tapped into um, to replace plastic. You'll want to make sure you get a bamboo that doesn't contain any sort of adhesive um, because that can have... Uh, formaldehyde in it or other solvents. And then you can also look for third party certified. Um, the next thing that you can look for would be natural rubber. So it has to be 100% natural rubber. We want to try and find something that maybe doesn't contain dyes because um, that's going to be more safe for our kids. But it's great for like toys, teethers, um, pacifiers, things like that. So let's look at um, 
These are the things that I just talked about for silicone. So it's a good alternative. Um, and then glass. We can look for silicone sleeves to protect it. Um, and then we've got the metal and the bamboo for you guys. Just kind of some um, talking points that are to go along with what we just talked about as far as like natural rubber um, for like pacifiers. And again, make sure it's without dyes. So now I'm going to share with you my top um, picks for plastic free meal times. And so here we have glass um, bottles and we use the Dr. Brown's because we have some GI issues um, and we need that venting system. The venting system is plastic. Um, this was something that I had to get used to. Um, Philips Avent also makes a natural bottle. And then I thought these were really cool. These um, mason jar bottles. If you have a kiddo that um, can handle that, um, it's a great option. It might be good for like traveling somewhere. Um, if you know you're going to have a jar, you can just use the bottle top. Um, they're all BPA free. This is the milk storage that I was talking about. Zip top is my favorite. I actually bought a bunch of these before we had um, our baby. And I love them. They don't spill. Um, they don't leak. But we, again, needed an insane amount of um, bags. And so I just could not swing um, getting all of these and keeping them. Um, I will tell you that we have a freezer and it is full of milk. So it just wasn't an option for us. But then I also found um, Janobi has some great food grade silicone bags. And then um, this brand Haka, I believe that's how you say it, also has some really great options for silicone storage. Um, food containers that you, if you want to make your own baby food, the Wee Sprout and Baby Move are glass. Um, I like this option. If you're looking for to make little cubes, which here's what I would do. I usually um, make the food, put it in here, and then pop it out and store it in like a silicone Ziploc bag. Um, and so I really like this um, food tray that has a clip-on lid. And then we're going to move on to bibs. So I think natural cotton, if you can find it organic, go for it. I think that's a great option. Um, or 100% like pure platinum silicone is one of my favorites. We like the food catcher at our house. And then we've got some pacifiers that you can try as well. Um, the um, top one is a natural rubber. I really like that. And then we tend to use the um, medical grade silicone um, just because that's what Cameron got used to in the NICU. But either one um, is a great option. A food mill is another great option to have at your house. Opt for one that's stainless steel. We don't want aluminum. Um, it's a great way to grind up some food and introduce it to your kiddo because that's what you're eating and your family's eating as well. And then toddler cups. So many options here, but I love the brand Otter Love. They have a ton of really great options. Um, they have a natural silicone. I also found um, some glass like mason jars that have silicone leaves uh, sleeves, excuse me, and straws. And then, um, we've got stainless steel and then, um, these sippy cups. And then these, um, lids are another really great way to, um, turn any cup into something that they can drink out of safely. Um, and then let's look at plates. So we've got um, silicone plates um, that are bamboo as well with like a silicone suction. Um, this one um, is silicone. There's metal. And then these are wheat grass uh, or um, like a, a wheat product that is made into like it feels like a plastic, but it's made from all natural materials. Um, and then we've got I wanted to include baby vitamins because we have to take a baby vitamin and I didn't really like just giving the Enfamil one. Um, I wanted other options. So I'm giving you guys um, a couple that you can take a look at yourself. They don't have iron in them, unfortunately. Um, so we would have to do that separately, but it's a great option. And then silverware. I think stainless steel is my favorite. I also really like, um, these Otter Love silicone ones, but then there's also bamboo and silicone as well. Um, so this is just a list for you guys to, um, take a peek at. I'll have this linked in the bottom of the description and you guys can take a look at all of the products. If you are looking for any of these for your own toddler, baby, or kiddo. 
So that is everything that you will need to know to create a toxin-free meal time for your kiddo, um, whether it's your baby, your toddler, your preschooler. Um, all of the links for everything that I mention in this week's video are in my blog post. What you'll do is scroll down um, through the description of this video and at the end I have this week's blog post linked. You can head there um, and I have everything linked for you. Any studies that I mention are also linked. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or um, shoot me an email and I will answer as best as I can. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great week and I will be back next week with a new Healthy House tip.